Well, hi, everybody, and welcome back to the show. I'm with Wayne Maguire from Ray White Mission Bay in beautiful downtown Auckland, NZ. How are you, Wayne? And thank you for joining. Yeah, very good, Ray. Very good. Uh, nice to join you and nice to hear that accent too. I can, I can pick a bit of Australia in there. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Now, did you have long hair like that when you were at school? Did you get in trouble? <laughs> it's, it's funny you say that, Ray. I had exactly this when I was in fifth form, our final year in sort of college. Yep. Then I went into the army, so I had the short haircut. Yep. And, and it's uh, for the rest of my life, and it's only been over that COVID period, I thought, oh, look, I'm not going to cut my hair. So I nice. feel like I'm a yeah, 15, 16-year-old again. Well, well, I'm quite inspired with my head. I'm, I'm actually thinking of doing something like that. So uh, all i all I got to do is come to Auckland and talk to your hairdresser. That would be, yeah, exactly. be perfect. Now, um, I'm really keen to hear your story. Um, uh, our, our, um, our mutual friend Aaron uh, put us in touch, and uh, Aaron from... Um, who's in Mexico at the moment, in, in Tulum. Yeah. He was on the interview before. Um, and... Uh, he said, you've got to talk to Wayne. He's got five officers, he's champion auctioneer. There's a lot going on at the moment. And I thought, boy, got to get you on the on the show. So thank you for your time. Um, let, can we just start? What's a little bit about your history? How did you get going? You obviously in really heavy with Ray White. Five officers is a big deal. Um, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm ex-Army, so I was 10 years New Zealand Army, travelled the world and that in a, in a unit jumping out of planes and that. So huge amount of discipline and I'm pretty determined. If you do a disc profile on me, I'm a, I'm a pretty sort of a double D, real heavy at that end. So any, anything I uh, set my mind on, we achieve. Right. Um, so we really be sort of careful what I am for the, yep. <laughs> nowadays. Yep. Uh, but we, we're pretty lucky. We've got five officers. They're inside a franchise group. For Some people may not be aware of that. It's Ray White. It's quite a large, or the largest in Australasia. Right. Uh, five officers sitting in there. Then we've got a property management business. I've got a uh, lead generation business. I've got a finance business. I've got a uh, removals, but oh, sorry, a renovations business. So yep. somebody who's trying to sell a house will renovate it. Just yep. started a build business. If they want to build, we'll build it. And we've got a relocation business because we reckon Auckland's uh, uh, pretty hot, pretty good. Yep. And if people want to move to New Zealand, uh, one relocation will take care of them. So across that sort of team, uh, batting around 120 odd people in those companies. Right. Um, so that, that certainly keeps me busy. Core of it is residential real estate sales in Auckland. Yeah, lovely, lovely. It's funny, I talk to my Canadian and American friends over here and and um, they say, I say, have you ever been to Australia? And they say, oh, no, not yet. It's on my list. But what I really want to do is go to New Zealand. <laughs> they all say that. And why wouldn't they? It's such a beautiful part of the world. Now, you touched on something just now, your army history, and it's something that I've been into late, which is kind of... Um, talking about personal discipline and focus and getting stuff done. Um, I happen to think, and I'm sure a lot of people listening to this would agree, but I think that that's a bit of a missing link in, in real estate success. Um, and it's not something you can buy out of a bottle. Um, what would be, what would be your, and, and I know we're working without a net here and I'm just throwing these ideas at you as they come into my brain, but I just think it's such a big and, and important thing. Um, if you were if you were going to consult with somebody one on one and they were struggling in that area a little bit and you could identify that they were struggling in their in their focus and attention to detail and and um and perhaps discipline on finishing a task, are there some guidelines you'd give them? What would you what would you say to somebody? I mean, I guess you've been inspiring your team for many years now, so um, you must have some must have some ideas around that. Yeah, yeah, I do. I was pretty lucky. I ended up in an elite unit. So if, if you're in the uh, mainstream, it's what you'd picture on the movies, you know, sort of rah, rah, everybody's yelling at you to motivate you. Yep. Uh, and I actually started my business like that, you know, thinking I had to motivate and, and charge through. Probably changed uh, the core of the people now to people that um, have uh, intrinsic motivation. Yeah, and I'll talk to them about that. My job with people really is uh, we're going to have a good time selling real estate. They're going to do a good job, yep. but I'm very, uh, very aware and conscious that I want them in the period of time they're with me that when they pop out the other side, they're better people. Okay. So, and, and and we were looking at that in the army. 
Yeah. Uh, so now, if uh, if somebody is struggling with discipline, um, I it's it's a matter of them looking within, not looking to me for it. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll be a shining example without a doubt. Yeah. I reckon I'm the fittest, fastest uh, guy in the team, uh, yeah. and I'm probably the oldest bugger in the team also. Yeah. But dis- discipline to me is the way we do one thing is the way we do everything. Yeah. Yeah. I like you that. take one shortcut, you're always going to take shortcuts. Yeah. Uh, and I, I was walking with one of my guys. We're going into a, a building. There was the uh, elevator, the lift, uh, and there was the stairs. And I said, mate, we don't take the lift. We take the stairs. And I'm conscious of that. I learned that years ago. I always take the stairs up the building and take it down. So yeah. uh, I, li- I like to stay fit anyway. So requirement for the team is um, if you're lacking a bit of dis- discipline or motivation, everything you do now needs to be disciplined. Yeah. Like I want it real tight, real tidy every single time. Yep. Once you eating right, uh, I, I'm. Uh, I used to, you know, being in the army, you're a pretty good drinkers in yes. the New Zealand army. Yep. Uh, but now I don't drink. It's right. like I haven't got time. I'm going to live to 112, so I can't afford to drink. Okay. So I exercise every every day. In fact, I exercise twice a day. I might be doing it too much. Uh, but to me, you've got to get your exercise in early in the day. Uh, then it's your nutrition it has to be clean. It's the fuel. And uh, you've got to stay away from alcohol. And then you've got to work your ass off. And you've got to have that intrinsic motivation as you come through. Okay. And I, I just expect in my other business owners, those businesses I described, we've got nine businesses. And for the majority of them, I've got partners in there on a 50-50 partnership. And normally I'll come side a business now and they'll, they'll actually join my group. I'll take 50% of their business without paying for it. But the value I'll add is I'll always double a business. I said, you just need to stand next to me and yeah. we'll double your business. Yeah. So I'll lead by example, but then I require them to look inside and clean up some of those habits that people have, not exercising, not eating right, uh, having a few beers. That's just poison. Forget that. We haven't got time. Uh, yeah. And then getting on. With it. The yeah. young guys and the girls that I see doing this, um, it pays off. So Ray, you know, like I'll have guys at my house three times a week exercising at night in a group and they're now the ones getting better real estate results. Yeah. Yeah. No brainer. Yeah. It, it flows through. Yeah. Better energy, better attitudes, all of that. And you, um, do you, do you think, do you think Wayne, it's a little bit about having a really powerful why I know that's very cliched nowadays, but um, like having a reason, I mean, if, if, I, if I look at you, and I don't even know about all your businesses, but um, running nine or 10 businesses like you do, um, that's that's a big why right there, because if you take your eye off the ball, something that you've built up is going to is going to maybe suffer. So do you think do you think with an individual, even somebody younger, somebody who's starting out, maybe somebody in their 20s, um, do you think finding their their kind of their core purpose is is central to this? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's like having a business that hasn't got a goal. You know, like we're quite, we're you know, crystal clear on our goals, you know, what, what the income will be, what the growth percentage will be, uh, value of property will sell, et cetera, you know, yeah. uh, and, and, why we're, and why we're doing it. So we know all of that. I think as the individuals, and you're right, right? Everybody goes on, what's your why? Yeah. Oh, oh, most of you guys haven't got a clue. And when I ask them, they'll, they'll actually just pick one off the shelf. It's this. Yeah. Nah, that's the why someone else has got. You know, my, my why is pretty straightforward. Live to 112. I've already got three daughters, three granddaughters, and I'm going to be the fittest guy. Like, there's no way in the world I'm not going to be running around with the kids. Yeah. And, and all I'm thinking about now is how do I build the trust, uh, the financial trust that will have the assets that will look after the generations to come? Like, the money is no good to me. Yeah? Yeah. But you only need a couple of T-shirts and a couple of pairs of jeans and a couple of cars. And... Uh, now it's about looking after the other guys. But, Ray, I think you're right. When we drill down to it, most of us, I think, would, will go through this life aimlessly and just yeah, hit the other end uh, before you know it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You mentioned, Wayne, before I press record, that you're doing some, um, some good to great work uh, with your team. Um, yep. is, that, is that Jim Collins? Is that the author? Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Can you, I don't know how, how much you can or can't tell us about that, but um, what sort of value has that given your team? Yeah, a, a, enormous, because uh, I want the buy-in. So across the, well, I've got a group and I call them the 2022 growth team. Uh, 
Okay. So they're my business partners. They're the leadership team within the core residential businesses. Yep. And if we do something, I don't want to scratch the surface on it. Most, most of education is just scratching the surface, yeah? Ticking the box. So we've gone into Jim Collins' Good to Great, and we've drilled in every, I bought everybody a copy. I think I bought about 30 copies of, uh, of the book. Yep. Uh, everybody reads it. And every Friday we have lunch together. Some of it's virtual. Some of the guys beam in. The others are in one of my boardrooms. And uh, we work through a chapter a week. So we work through the chapters. We debate them. We discuss them. We ask for understandings. You know, different personalities see it different ways. Uh, and we're at the end of that now. And we're, we're about to do the summary on it. So my guys now use the language of good to great. Yeah. Um, you know, people that have read it, they'll understand, you know, the on the bus, off the bus, right seats, hedgehog, uh, you know, the flywheel. We've, we really are using that. But I think, Ray, the, the learning in that is I could have given them the book and said, hey, was it a good book? They'd say, yeah, it was great, Wayne, thanks. Um, but we've, we've slowed people down and made them work through it. And now it's part of us and we've got a real interest in it. We, I actually got in touch with uh, Jim Collins' outfit. He's down in Boulder. Um, so uh, down around Denver, Colorado. Yep. Uh, so I got in touch with those guys. I said, oh, I'm fascinated with this. I need to talk to people around the world in real estate because I need to get our hedgehog concept correct. And it, it's something, it, the companies in it that went to great took four years to work out what a hedgehog was, yeah? So uh, I'm, I'm going to, yeah, anybody that's listening to this, if you're ahead of me, Oh, just give me a shout, share. Let me know how the hedgehog works for you, what you think the hedgehog is in residential real estate. How do we... Uh, some New Zealand, some New Zealand wine. Okay, fabulous. Well, out of your cellar because you're not drinking any. So, yeah, let's <laughs> let's not let it go to waste. Um, some of those wines from Waiheke, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah if, if you want to get If you want to get into detail. Um, tell me, um, uh, when, when you're recruiting people what are you looking for what are you because you must be central to bringing people into your team I always say um, uh, it's got to be somebody that I like uh, it's got to be somebody that you know that I could bring into my family that my best friend would would like and and they'd have something going on and it's got to be somebody that fits the family photo if you know what I mean so um, what are you what are your thoughts what are you looking for yeah, you, uh, you, you nailed it, right? It's exactly the same. It's just, I'm, I'm just looking for a person that uh, I enjoy and I like. So yep. if I sit there on that first cup of tea with them, um, it's, it's like, do I like this person? Because if I do, I reckon someone else will, and they'll, they'll get residential listings and they'll sell houses. And then do, do I trust them, obviously? Yep. And um, will, how will they impact on our culture? Yeah. Uh, so, it, and culture to me, as I ever really thought about culture, and culture to me now is a slither of everybody yeah. combined in the team. Now, yeah. I'll have a big impact on that, and I'll be you know, about the way we talk to each other, how we treat each other, where our focus is. But if I bring a new person in, it changes their culture. And on day one, when somebody joins our team, I say, on day, on day one, when you're in, you're in. Like, you are 100% in. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're part of the culture. You own all our success, all our all our glory is yours. You, you're 100% part of the team. But equally, that person will now affect culture. So I'm working out, um, yeah, are, are they going to be a good fit for us? Are they prepared to learn? Um, and is it going to be neat working with them? And, and I joke with the team, it's never on good looks. I look around the team, I say, geez, guys, like, I picked you because I like you. People will like you. Unfortunately, it's not for your good looks. I can't, I can't tell you that. <laughs> You're just trying to build them up, Wayne. Obviously. <laughs> so, within with a big part of it as well is obviously leading by example because people pick up on that. It's interesting when I look at a team or when I'm working with the team, people pick up on the tiniest nuances of yeah. of the leaders and the leadership team and the influences within that team, don't they? So, it's very much a leading by example and. When you're running an enterprise or enterprises like you are, people are looking for Wayne Maguire's leadership and they're picking up on that. It's almost like they want a bit of you to rub off on them. Um, mm. And if they're, if they're working mm. 
if they're working alongside you, they're getting the opportunity to do that and they're growing with you. They're growing their personal brand, which is their name, and they're, they've got the opportunity to work with you as well. So um, when, when somebody starts with you, how do you help them hit the ground running? Obviously, listings for us is the holy grail in real estate, but and I don't want to. I don't want you to give away all your secret sauce. But I'm just interested to learn how how you how you get somebody, how you let their rubber hit the road. How do you how do you give them some traction? Yeah, we uh, yeah, we're very clear with the guys that they start at the hard end, the prospecting bit. Yeah, okay. so the guys in real estate are aware of that prospecting at the beginning. Uh, is tough, but unfortunately, you, you start at the tough end. It gets yep. easier at the other end, open homes, and you meet people, you've got a big database. Yep. And in our case, a, a database, if somebody can get uh, clean data of 2,000, yep. 2,000 uh, people sitting in there, home and hose for the rest of their life. You know, yep. they've, they've made it. So at the beginning, we're looking to gain data uh, and get into the market. So we're now, I'm now running, I've, I actually looked, we do a lot of work with um, Tony Robbins. I do a lot of, I, I, attend a lot of Tony Robbins training. I've done business mastery. Yep. And we've dialed in and had a look at their, some of their financial products that they, uh, they recommend. Yep. And we've taken a financial product and we've used it as a, as a management tool. Okay. So instead of just doing numbers, we've taken it over to activity. So now when somebody starts, we can say, uh, here's the volume of contacts that I require from you every single day. Yep. So it can be a mix of uh, knocking on doors in our case, Yep. on a residential door. It can be phone calls. Uh, it can be getting your email out and they're, they're responding or it could be dropping postcards in the letterbox. Yep. But here's the amount of contacts every single day. And I'm now running a traffic light system, which is uh, you'll be self-accountable. Yep. Uh, we'll track you on a, on a day. And then every Monday, you'll just, you'll just tell me if you get a green light, which is you hit your targets, keep saying, or you'll get an orange light, which is... Wow. Okay, there was uh, that wasn't great. So now you've got to uh, correct that and get back to green. Or if you've had an orange light and you repeat it, you'll get a red light. And red light is you're telling me uh, I'm not making it. I'm, I'm uh, something's not right here. Yeah. So real estate may not be for me. So it's not my job to uh, tell them if they're in or out. It's yeah. numerical. And then yeah. the balance of that ray is huge support systems. Okay, like we've got training. Uh, we've got more training than any other company in New Zealand that we provide more leadership support at every level. Yep. Like I'd, I'd know, uh, every, unfortunately, uh, we're all the same. We're all within a family uh, or a home or individuals. There's always health problems and financial problems. So more so, more, I'm more holistic with that. I'll know, okay, yeah, look, I know you're cutting it pretty fine to the wind financially or yep. You know, one of my guys came in yesterday looking a bit shocked. I was like, oh, I think he's either done a big deal or something's wrong. Yep. Well, he'd just done a scan and found out that his, uh, you know, his wife was pregnant, but they've just found out they're going to have three babies. And I'm like, okay. Wow. wow. So it's under, I'll understand all of that. My, my training team will train you technically. And they'll train you on the nuances of doing real estate. Yep. And then my leadership team will support them. But for the guys, very clear. Here's your numbers. Hit the ground. And if you do this, it's you're gonna you'll have exponential growth. You'll come along like this. It will be at this stage. You'll be going. Oh, I wonder if I'm going to make it. When am I ever going to list something? And then it will take off. Yeah. And then we'll just yeah. and then we'll just run the the next program. So they they start at the hard end. I'm I'm sure it's well. I don't know. Maybe it's the same all over the world. I don't think it is. I I think a lot of people um don't get that support when they start. I think a lot of okay. promises are made in real estate offices and yeah. people people yeah. Uh, come in and they're brand new. Um, the numbers coming out of the US at the moment is that I think it's something like 85% of people don't last the first 12 months. Oh, so oh, the, wow. the churn is, uh, that's their NAR figures. So the churn is phenomenal. Um, and I'm thinking there's a lot of potentially good people in there who, who uh, for, for one reason or another, um, don't don't sort of make it through. You touched on something earlier, which made me think, um, I've always kind of had this theory, I'd be interested in your opinion, but I figure if somebody's struggling professionally, if they're not getting their results that they're looking for, I find there's often something in the background going on. Could be a relationship issue, uh, and it often is, I've got to say, um, a home, a domestic issue, there's something not 100%. And yeah. um, 
uh, might be a health issue, could be a some sort of relationship issue with family or there's something going on. There could be an addiction issue. There could be a gambling issue. I guess that's an addiction issue. Um, something like that. And my, my theory here, and I have no training to say this, it's the school of life, I guess, probably much like yourself, but um, you're not going to fix the professional issue until you can address the personal issue. Yeah. Once you yeah. can address the personal issue, the gains can be phenomenal. So yeah. I often look to that and there's, there's something not 100% right. If I'm coaching somebody or working with somebody and yeah. they keep on hitting this wall, it's often something in the background that needs addressing. Ray, you think about this, um, sort of when I got out of the army and I, 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 yeah, I love the army, did pretty well in the army, very well in the army, jumped out and I was like, yeah, will I be, what it's going to be like to be a civilian? So I put myself heavily into learning, post-grade university, et cetera. Yeah. And at that stage, the teaching was uh, when you're at work, you're at work, leave, leave you know, your family life or your home life at the door. Yeah. So that was literally what we were told. Um, you know, just get on with it. And we focus on the you know, work, I suppose, and just address those issues. Yep. Today, uh, I think, you know, I'm, I'm more like you, which is the person is the person. Like that, that is, it doesn't change. The person with problems at home is the person that comes to work with problems at home. And I'm conscious, as you said, with my brand, which is who I am. When I step out the door, um, I have to be consistent. So there is, an absolute blend now between Wayne at home and Wayne at work. It's exactly the same guy. It's the same clothes if I'm at work or if I'm at home. And the guys that come in three times a week, they train at my house yeah. and I'm the same guy. Yeah. Same language, same way of dealing with people, et cetera. So I'm absolutely consistent. Yeah. So I think if you've got problems at home, uh, you're in trouble at work. And it really is, let's uh, let's sort those out. And, and again, if I just go back a step, like my guys are going to make a lot of money selling real estate. It's, it's a very good industry. Uh, and, and they're going to provide a fantastic service, better than anybody else, to yep. their clients. Yep. But then the thing I want is that from the time when they arrive with me and when they leave, just by hanging out together in the way we do things, that they're better people. Like they're better parents, better people. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're kind of getting the opportunity, mold them's probably the wrong word, but you're getting the opportunity to influence them because they're, yeah, they're again, I come back to that point. They're kind of, you, you know, you're, you're, you're walking the talk, aren't you? They're seeing, they're seeing what you do. They're seeing how you react. They see how you interact with yeah. people, yeah. Um, how you treat people. Uh, and we started off this at the top of the talk saying, at the top of the session saying, um, uh, oh gosh, I forget the exact words, but um the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. If you take everything. that shortcut, um, it's a reflection on 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 the whole of your life. So uh, that's a that's a truism, I guess. So um, before we press record as well, you were telling me about some of the work that you're doing with converting your uh, pipeline leads or in your funnel. Um, so you've got you've obviously attracting people into your funnel um, and. I don't know what the market's like in Auckland, but um, I work with work with quite a few um, um, Kiwis, and I notice uh, down in Dunedin it's getting tougher. In in Christchurch it's getting tougher. The list to sell time is is um, flowing out. I was talking to Mike Great. Cranston from um, from Dunedin um, last week, and he said, "Ray, uh, two months ago I'd have to park around the corner at, a, at an open house." Now I can park right out front. So are you noticing these changes in, in your market in Auckland as well? Yeah, we're, we're, we're absolutely the same. What, what's happened in New Zealand is the banks have turned off the money. Right. So the central bank, if I put this in generic terms, the central bank has told the, uh, the whole lending uh, mechanism, uh, don't, don't put people under stress when you lend the money. Make sure they can afford it. And if you do put them under stress, we'll give you a caning. We might even take your banking license away. Okay. So all, all the, all the uh, lenders, and in our case, the banks, it scares them. And so they've said, geez, I'm not giving money to anybody. I could get in trouble. Wow. So they turned the tap off. So we've got all the, yeah, we've, uh, give you an idea. We normally at this time of year carry 50 to 60 listings. Right now we've got 108. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's that's the that's the volume of property that's sitting there. 
buyers are still enthusiastic, but they go, hey, Wayne, I've got no money, so it's no use me coming out today. Yeah. So we've gone from properties that would have had 40 people come and view them at open homes and private inspections over you know, three and a half, four weeks, yep. down to 12. Okay, okay. Yeah. Gee, yep. it's, cra it's crazy, isn't it? Because you'd think with your prime minister who has so much experience in business and property that uh, she'd make a decision like that. It's mind boggling. <laughs> well, it's, um, it, it, it has to change because we're the same as the rest of the world. We've all come yep. through COVID, businesses shut down. Uh, and if money isn't flowing through an economy, the economy is going to uh, crash. We've got electric elections coming up next year. So that in New Zealand, what that means is the government always throws your money. Yep. Uh, so they, they, they have to let it, they have to, and they're doing it now. They're saying to the banks or to the central bank, hey, guys, ease off a bit. You know, don't, don't give them a caning. Just relax a little bit. And the bank's saying, hey, we're going to ease off. So it must flow. We've got to get the money back into the system. When it does come back in, uh, we can we can have a spike of activity. Yep. So yep. We're, and, and we're gearing up for that. My guys now, uh, we change gears. In fact, I showed my guys a um, an F1 pit change at their sales meeting you know, up on the uh, off YouTube. Yep. Guys come in, bang, change the tires, bang, it's out again, uh, under two seconds. So I said, uh, immediately, guys, we're in the pit change. Change from your old process immediately now. Like, you've got two seconds to do it. Yep. You're now in a process where you'll have 12 people, one party interested, and that's it. Yep. So, and we'll still need to sell houses. Yep. When it changes back to volume and there's more people coming through, guys, I'll play the video again. And we'll come in, we'll do a pit change, put different tires on, and we'll go again. So, yeah, I, I, we're only in this for a period of time, but you must still sell within the market you're sitting in. So yeah, conscious of that. Well, you'd have, you'd have, and it's always seems to be, but that you'd have 30% of your listings that need to get a result within the next 30 days. You've got people that don't want to sell that that have to sell. So I guess that's yeah. probably, might be a discussion for another day, but this is where you need those uh, those discussions with your sellers to help them straighten up and fly right and, and get the result. Because if this keeps diving away, um, the offer they get tomorrow might not repeated be repeated for for quite a while. So it's hundred uh... percent, Ray. That's our discussion every week. I'll have uh, vendors. I, I call all the auctions. So I'm at the front end of negotiating. Yeah. Uh, and I'll have people say to me, "Oh, that's all right. We can hold." I say, yeah. "Are you serious? Like holding on a declining market means you get mm. less. Mm. Like holding in, in last year's market, great idea. Holding on a declining market." Hmm. How does that work? And, and they sort of look at it and they go, oh, shit, it's not a great strategy. Yep, rates are going up. So it's, <laughs> it's the same old cycle. Let's finish yeah. on that. Let's finish on this uh, on this point of conversion, which is one of my favourite things to talk about. So you've got a bunch of, you've got a bunch of contacts um, in, in your database, probably thousands, I would imagine. Um, yes. Can you share any strategies that you might be using to communicate with them to bring those guys to market? Obviously, there's no magic. If they don't want to sell, they don't want to sell. But um, they say that, and these again are American figures, only because I don't have any Australian or NZ figures, and maybe there are some, but they, they say that the average agent in, um, in or realtor, as they say, um, some even some people even say realtor, um, interestingly enough, but they say that the average agent knows, the average seller knows 12 agents. So there could well be people, obviously, on your list and all of our lists who are talking to other people as well. So what kind of strategies do you use to help bring these people to market? What's, um, uh, I guess you're reaching out with email, I guess not so much the communication, but do you have a strategy behind that? Yeah, uh, let, me, let me give some, you know, I'll, I'll just do this as if I've got a couple of my guys in front of me and can I, I'll just go through some of the numbers. Uh, first of all, the 85% of people that come in and don't make it, like that, that's um, the industry should be shot for that. Like yep. the guys running the industry, what they've done there is they've destroyed a person, they've destroyed their personal capital that the person had in the bank and they spent it when they made no money. Yep. They've destroyed them socially in front of their friends, you know, like, oh, well, I didn't make it in real estate. Uh, and, and you've taken a person and, and set them up to fail. Like, like the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. You make them fail at that, they're going to fail at the next thing. So, it's like the industry. Just get absolutely cane. They should be, you know, that, that, that should stop. You can't bring somebody in 
and wipe them out of their personal earning or the, the little bit of money in the bank and their confidence. That's, that's a disgrace. Next one is just on the numbers. Uh, the, the person knows 12 agents. I would be surprised at that. Uh, I, I do a lot of, I, I like uh, studying some of the stuff coming out of the States. I may get this guy's name pronunciation wrong. I know him pretty well, though. Robert Caldini. Yeah. Um, now he'll still yeah, talk the author about, of influence. Yeah. Influence, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And and he'll still talk and the numbers are now changing. Uh, but he'll talk that there's you know, you probably got about three or four brands that people remember. So I don't think they'd know 12 agents. Uh, I think there'd be three or four in the mix. Yep. So if, if somebody's now in real estate and they're watching this, and uh, the minute you get the opportunity to talk to somebody about selling their home, uh, we ask a couple of things. First thing is we go hey, look, we're going to bring in some data, you know, on sort of what's selling so that we've, uh, we have a meaningful discussion and so I don't waste any time with you, yeah? Yes. Just tell me what range should that data be in? Yep. So immediately we're asking them, they're telling me, hey, look, I reckon my, in New Zealand, I reckon my house is going to be about 2 million. Sweet. Yep. I'll yep. bring in 2 million, yep. If they say, I don't know, I say, well, look, you know, do you want me to bring a million bucks or 5 million? Yeah. Oh, Wayne, we're more like, great. So I understand that, yeah, first, first question. So by asking questions, understand where they are thinking their house is price-wise. Yep. Second one, as I say, um, is there any other agents in our area that you've already got a relationship with? Good question. And that way, that way I'm trying to find out, uh, and I don't think it would be 12, but there might be a couple. And yep. I'm now trying to find out, is it worth me even pitching for this business? Well, what's the odds on me winning this? Yep. And if they go... Uh, look, we've got a, a competitor down the road, Veronica. She's a, she's a champ, you know. Um, we like competing against it. Uh, and they go, yeah, look, I saw my last 15 houses with Veronica. And I go, okay, <laughs> are you ready for a change? Oh, we love it. Oh, look, Veronica's great. Just stick with her. Look, yeah, I don't think you need me to come in. I'm just going, hey, as a business, don't waste my time. Yeah. So I'm trying to find out, if, have they got an association with somebody? If they say, no, nah, not really. Go, Sweet, great. Less competition. They'll invite a couple in, but less competition. We're all even now. Next thing I'll ask them is, uh, is anybody in the market, if it's no to relationship, is anybody in our market that you've seen them do something and go, oh, I like the way they've done that? Yeah, that's a great so question. So again, it's a, question, it's a question that tells me what they like. Yeah, uh, and, and I'll pick another guy. Um, David, he's, he's at a competing company. Yeah, David's all about marketing and he does this, this and this. Sweet, okay, great. This person likes marketing. I'm going to put it on my list. And I reckon from that disclosure, David's going to, about to come in and pitch against me. Yep. So now as I go into that opportunity, I know what the, what the uh, opposition looks like, yeah, the guys I'm going, to, I'm going to fight against. And I also know what the vendor's thinking. So if yep. I sort of I've parked that, that's, uh, that's where we would go in. When we go in with my guys, I'm saying, uh, you, you've got uh, two jobs. Yep, the first one is give them confidence to come to market today. Second one is to demonstrate to them that you are the only person you go to market with. You're the best. Yeah. And that's it. So what we're working now, and if I go back to good to great, good to great's got the hedgehog concept, which is what's the one aspect of your business, if you get it right, it determines everything else. And so we've played around. We, we're a strong auction business. So it's the auction success rate, selling by auction, less days on market. Um, we sell it for more, more advertising, more profile, et cetera, et cetera. We're going back to prospecting. What if we were the best at prospecting, had more numbers come through? So today where I am and where I'm debating with my leadership team is I'm debating that uh, the hedgehog concept for us is uh, listing appointments to the market in the next 90 days. Yeah. So in our market, Ray, we our guys uh, around in our industry call it an appraisal uh, or a CMA, current market appraisal. They'll say, we'll come in and do an appraisal. So we've taken that language out. I said, it's not about them understanding the value of the house. They've got an idea on that already. It's about showing them that they should come to market and you're the best person to come to market with. So now if we get that listing appointment, which was pulled in appraisal, we get the listing appointment, my measure of success in the business is how many of those come to market in the next 90 days. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, Ray, you'll, think, you'll, you'll be conscious of this. We go, yeah, but Wayne, a whole lot go into pipeline. I go, sweet. That's good because we know that's, that's business now in the next 12 to 18 months. Yeah. And we need that because financially as a business, I want to demonstrate value in the business and say, 
I know what the next 12 to 18 months looks like. I've got the pipeline packed. Yep. But then I come back to my guys and go, in your own individual business, uh, that is going to be your profit, but your cash flow is the next 90 days. You won't make it to 18 months out if you don't get something in the market. So if you sit with me and go, hey, Wayne, I'm doing really well. I'll put 10 into my pipeline. I'll say, that's fine. I don't start counting those until I've ticked off the next 90 days. Yep. So if you've worked five days a week, and it won't be, if you work five days a week and you've stacked up your pipeline, I'll go, sweet, you're going to work seven days a week because I've got to get you 90 days up. So it is listing appointments to market in the next 90 days. Gotcha. Gotcha. I love it. And, 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 and we're pretty passionate about, and sorry, Ray, we're passionate about that. Economically, it makes sense. And now I've gone back through my team and said, let's have a look at the material you walk in with. It's yep. got to be the best in the world. Yep. Yep. Central to that is, um, is, is the social proof of testimonials, which is probably a, a subject for another day as well. But I'm sure that's part of your, yeah. your, your arsenal. So, um, mate, it's been fabulous to, uh, to catch up. Thank you so much for your time today. I'll wrap things up. How do, how do we reach you? How do, if people want to connect, how do we connect with Wayne McGuire? Um, it's, it's like anything in the world now. You just Google Wayne McGuire and it'll, okay. it'll pop up. There's, there's some crazy guy does cartoons up in the States or drawings. It's not me. Okay. Uh, but uh, email address wayne.mcguire, and Maguire is all lowercase, M-A-G-U-I-R-E at raywhite.com. Lovely. Uh, okay. Or if you, if you go uh, plus six, four, two, seven, four, two, two, three, three, seven, seven, send me a text message. I love real estate. I love people. So uh, I'll, I'll connect and try and offer value anywhere I can. Awesome, mate. Are you on Facebook? Uh, yeah. Yep. Jip, jip, okay. Jump in there. I don't even know what it is on Facebook. Just go Wayne McGuire. You'll see me with short hair probably. We will find you. That will that will be the test. Um, thank you so much, my friend. It's been an absolute blast. Stay on the call for one sec. I'm going to press stop now. Talk to you shortly. Fantastic. Thank you very much.